let's say we have a product model and this is the show page for a specific product. Now let's say we want to spice up this page a little bit by adding a photo of the product on this page. So when we edit our product in our form, we want an, a button here where we can upload a file, uh, an image as an attachment to this product. In this episode, I want to show you how to handle attachments using the Paperclip plugin. Uh, this is also available as a gem, but that doesn't seem to be as up to date as the plugin. So we're just going to use this and uh, install the plugin into our application. So just the simple script plugin install, and then just the URL to our paperclip plugin. Next, we need to run the paperclip generator, script generate paperclip. Uh, this will just generate a migration file for adding some columns to our products table. So the way this works is you just pass the name of the model you want to add attachments to, so called product, and then whatever you want the attachment to be called. So in this case, we'll call it photo, and then just generate that. And then you just run the migrations to uh, insert the columns. Just so you know, here's what they, that migration file that was generated looks like. It's just adding some photo-based file columns to our products table uh, so it can manage those. The next step is to add a simple line inside of our product model called has attached file, then the name of the attachment which you specified in the migration or the generator, which is just called photo. So this adds an attachment and a lot of methods related to it to our product model. Now inside of our product form we can add the button for adding the file attachment. So let's just call it uh, file field, and then it's called photo. That's the name of our attachment for our product. Now we also have to specify some HTML options in here for the multi-part. Set it to true. Otherwise this form won't accept file attachments. Now when we go to our form again and reload, there it is, there's a file button. So now let's try uploading a photo. Select a picture, submit it, and there we go. Looks like it's submitted, but it's not showing up on our page yet because we haven't told it to. To do that, all we have to do is just go to our show action template in our product for our product and just add an image tag here to our photo attachment. And to get that, you just call product.photo. That's our attachment object that um, Paperclip provides and just call URL on this and that will return the URL to that specific file. Okay, now let's just try reloading here and there it is, there's our big photo of our product. But let's say we want it smaller, this is a little big for us, so how do we get it to resize it to a smaller size? Well, if we take a look back in our model, we can see the has attached file method has a lot of options on it and one of them is called styles and this will allow us to specify different sizes for our image. So we can make a small version if we want and make that 150 pixels by 150 pixels in size and adding this little less than sign will tell it to keep the proportions as it resizes it so it doesn't distort the image to that specific size. Now to get this part to work you have to have image magic installed because that's what Paperclip uses to handle the resizing of the image. Uh, the rest of Paperclip doesn't really require image magic so it will still work without it. Now in order to display the smaller version of the image, you just need to pass the name of the style, called small in this case, to the as a parameter to the URL method. And this will return the URL to that specific styled version, uh, the, the resized smaller version of that image. Now if we go back to our product show page and try to reload here, uh, this won't work, we get a broken image, and that's because this was a previously existing image and it doesn't resize those. The resizing happens when you actually save the attachment, so we'll need to go back and edit and add this file attachment again here. And there we go, there's the small version of our attached photo. Now if we take a look at the source of this page, we can see where a paperclip is storing the attachment. Um, it's under photos, one, which is the product ID number, uh, small, which is the style, and then the name of the photo. So this is great, but sometimes you might want to change where the file is stored. 
Uh, for example, I like to put this under an assets directory, which is shared across all releases of my application. So that way, when I redeploy the app, I don't lose all the attachments um, that were added before in the last deployment. So how do you do that under Paperclip? Well, going back to our model, there's a couple different options we need to pass here to accomplish this. Um, one is called URL, and one is called path. It's a little bit confusing, but you actually need to change both of these. Uh, the URL option is basically the URL to the image that from the client that the client sees, so from the public directory, basically. And the path is the actual location of the image on the file system, so the full uh, file path. Now these values here are the defaults that come with Paperclip. And as you can see, there's some placeholders uh, in the path name. So um, attachment is photos in this case, ID is the product ID number, style is small, let's say, and base name and extension. Uh, so that's the current path that Paperclip is using. But we want to change that, so how do we do that? Well, we'll need to change both of these, but let's start at the URL. We want it under the assets directory, under products, and then we could just have it ID style, and so on. So let's say we want it to look like this. Well, we need to change this in both our URL and the path option. And there we go. Now it will store our products images in this new directory path. And if you followed the previous episode where I symlinked the assets directory, uh, that means that the file attachments will stay the same for every single um, release of the application when you redeploy it. So you won't lose attachments that way. Now I want to finish up this episode by showing a couple options you can use uh, for validations. So let's say we want to validate this attachment and make sure that it's present. And we don't want to allow someone to save a product without adding, adding a photo, for example. Just validates attachments, presence, photo. And then um, you can also validate the size of the attachment, the actual file size, make sure it's less than five megabytes, for example. And you can also validate the content type. So if you want to make sure this photo is an actual image, uh, let's say JPEG or PNG, you could just restrict the content type here. Now, if you're doing this, be careful with Internet Explorer because it does pass some odd content types. Just something to watch out for. Anyway, that's it for this episode. I hope you found it useful, and I'll see you next week. This episode is sponsored by Pragmatic Screencasts. There you will find high-quality screencasts on a variety of subjects, including Ruby and Rails. Check them out at pragmatic.tv.